I thought I'd do a YouTube video for you today on WaveTech Synthesized Function Generator Model 288. Quite a few of these floating around on eBay. Seems to be some common problems, but no one really talking about the internal battery and the encoder knob, some things that I'm starting to see uh, and nobody really servicing these. So I thought I would do a service on this one, uh, get mine up and running. When you first turn the unit on, it says calibration required. Now, you have to wait 20 minutes, that's according to the manual and the way that the unit is designed and set up, before the unit will be able to calibrate. So if I sit, hit calibrate right now, you'll see a timer start. And it's at wait 19 minutes, 0.6, and it'll count down until, you know, basically 20 minutes later, and then you'll hit calibrate and it will make his attempt to calibrate. So I'll be back after that time. So as you can see, the unit auto calibrated after that 20 minute countdown, but just for the sake of doing it for the video, I'm gonna hit the calibrate button here, and we're gonna watch it go through its cycle. You'll hear some relays clicking, and it does its uh, magic. Now it's pulling this information off of a RAM chip that's already already has the calibration information on the inside and that chip is kept alive through a three volt uh, DL I forget the name of the battery uh, the, the number but we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later in the video so now it's again calibrating and with any luck we'll get a successful calibration here and then we'll be able to look at some more functions here we go. I think, all right, there we are. So auto calibrated, good to go. So let's check something here for this one that I've discovered. If I go to frequency and I try to change the frequency with the encoder knob enabled, you see where it disables the knob, enables the knob, I get the nothing. I could, if I wanted to say, change it to 120 Hertz manually, um, great, good to go. But I'd like this encoder knob to work. This is a great unit for uh, many purposes and has some cool features. So uh, let's see if we can get this puppy up and running. So we'll start with that now. All right, we'll begin here by uh, taking the top cover off. You can see that somebody has been here before I. Looks like the warranty stickers have been broken. Somebody's been inside before. I'm not sure if it was this all test instruments or not, where I purchased this from on eBay, but we'll take a look. Two cut two screws here. And uh, I can see two more here. I suppose I better unplug this puppy, huh? That would be not good to have live while pulling the cover. So now, I think if I slide, oh boy, that's on there pretty good, huh? Let me, uh, let's turn, oh, well, <laughs> got to be smarter than the items you're working on. Let's take a look. All right, so there is a fifth screw on the back there, looks like it. Uh-huh, all right. There we go, let's slide this puppy off and see what we got. Oh, this one. Well, wow. okay. Looks like some shielding. Cool. Aha, uh -huh. and our first warning. Line voltage is connected to components beneath this shield even when the power switch is in the off position. Okay, very good. So you're... You know, there's many videos on YouTube that talk about safety and working on uh, electronics and electrical. Um, you know, I'm not going to give you the spiel. Uh, if you've, if this happens to be your first time seeing any uh, video uh, that has to do with electronics, I'll just say that if you're following along, this seems to be the YouTube uh, thing. You're doing so at your own risk. I'll say you're doing so at your own peril or endangerment. You put your hands across any one of those caps that are inside of there, 
uh, depending on what the voltage that's being held inside those caps are, it could literally end your life. Just be cautious. Uh, if you have not worked on this and haven't been trained or trained under someone, such as myself, I did an understudy years ago uh, with some folks, and if you are just trying to learn this on your own, uh, read up, educate yourself, and uh, hopefully you'll you'll be okay. All right, so moving on. So now what we want to see is, right now my problem is the encoder isn't working. So I'm going to have to get into that panel. But looking here, this is an old, older kind of card system that some companies probably still use to this day. I'm not quite sure. Things are made differently, but it looks very well made. But if I pull, oh, no. Uh, let's see. Ah, okay, yeah. These guys here, uh-huh. Great, just like RAM in a computer. These cards should come out. If I'm careful, uh-huh. Well, didn't break that, hopefully. Yeah, so there's a card. Now, you got to be very careful when working on and touching any parts here. Static electricity can take out a lot of these ICs that are in there. Integrated circuit chips, so you got to be careful of that as well. I am standing on carpet. Which, of course, as we know, uh, when you're a kid, you could run around and get all build all kinds of static electricity up in charge. But I have something that's grounded to uh, that carpet in that system that I touch over here periodically that discharges my body for static electricity. There's also wristbands you can wear and things that continue to discharge you. I think for the moment I'm safe and discharged, so I'm going to continue. Looks like this card comes out. Good deal. Next one, find some more for this. Looks like these are just shields. Okay, great. Shields. And this one, yeah, no. There must be some screws underneath the bottom to get that shield out. Take a look. Looks like we've got one screw here. That's kind of messed up. All right. Uh, where was I at? Now, let's take a look. There's probably something back here. Yeah, okay. Couple of little screws. More than likely, this should do the same thing, hopefully. Yes, all right. Why it's tight. Turn it sideways. Wow, all right. Wow, oh, nice, uh, nice board there. Very well shielded. Looks like these are the three screws for that center shield. Let's uh, get these puppies out. Okay, looks like the next step, let me get rid of these boards here so we put them somewhere safe. The encoder is underneath here, you can see the symbol for it there. And that's what we got to get to and to be able to uh, extract it and take a look. There is probably a way to test it here. 
um, but because it's an encoder, you can test it on its own outside of the circuit. So I, that's the method I prefer to use. And the reason is, is I've seen too many other uh, units on eBay for sale where the encoder is missing. It tells me that uh, people are removing them and selling them separately. Certainly there's somewhere that we can source that separately. And if I find a resource like Mauser or uh, DigiKey or somewhere, I'll share that with you in the link below the video, but let's first get in and see which model of that encoder is. So to remove that board, aha, uh -huh. all right, so we'll start here. Looks like this is some power, and uh, well, I'll zoom in on that right there, and we'll take a look. Looks like there is a, uh, a ground. Yeah, all right, so we're going to pull this guy here up. Oh, there we go, nice and easy. All right, and let's come back out. Sorry about the shaky camera. Ah, all right, so two more screws right here, you can see. Hmm. Boy, those are long-winded. Um, let me take those off. Off camera. So it looks like the next step here is for me to remove these uh, protector caps, and looks like we've got some nuts on these BNC connectors to take off. So let me grab some tools to do that. I'll be right back. All right, and through the magic of the camera, we are back. Uh, this is a USA-made product, so it turns out. Uh, this will be 9 sixteenths. So let's go for that. When I'm working on these projects, I always try to keep all my parts in something. This is just a, not, not an ashtray, but like a glass holder. Maybe it was a candle holder, not sure at any rate. So this should come out, oh, wow, rather easy. Good deal. All right, so you can see the pin connector here that was uh, in place for giving all the information back to the main motherboard. Um, but what we're concerned about is, let's take a look here. Go ahead and zoom in on this guy here. We're concerned about this guy right here, this encoder. I believe that it's bad. Um, or it could be a part of the circuit that's bad. So let's investigate and find out. So the next thing I'm going to do is figure out how to get this motherboard off. Looks like if I remove these screws here, uh, uh, or daughter board rather, and um, hopefully these solder, oh, those are hard soldered. So I may have to remove this entire face here um, right from the boards to be able to access that encoder. Uh, so I'll figure that out and then I'll be right back. All right, so I've taken these screws out, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this board starts to feel like it's moving, so that's good. I've also taken the other screws out here, and I can't seem to get the board to release. There's a little something holding on. One thing that I need and failed to do initially was to take off this encoder cap, and I'm going to guess, yeah, all right. That's rather loose, actually. I don't think that would have been the initial problem. I hope not. I'll test it otherwise. I mean, it feels good to the hand, so we'll see. 
so I can get this board to come out. Let's take a look now. So I can't seem to get this board to release from the back side. My guess is something underneath here. And I'm not sure quite how that plate is attached. It doesn't look like I can... Yeah, it doesn't look like I can take that part out. But there's no other knobs or anything that's connected. And the pressure feels like it's, like it's that plate. So we can work on this puppy regardless. I could unsolder all these connections here now but that's probably just going too far just to replace an encoder at any rate so that's a large encoder there is a name oh it's a borns well let's see if we can uh zoom in on that and uh Let's see how far this zoom can go. Yeah, sorry about the shakiness. I don't know if you can see or detect. That says Borns. Right here. At any rate, I'm still getting used to this camera. So, so let's go ahead and remove that. It looks as if we've got three and four there let's bring this puppy down a little bit so this is my desoldering gun it's how i choose to work on things let's start with right here See if we can get that to comply. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see, maybe that guy there. All right, well, sometimes these can be a little bit more finicky. Oh, look at that. suspicion about the encoder may have been right this may have taken a hit that doesn't look like a good sign there yeah that looks like it's a broken broken PCB or something back there all right I'm gonna continue taking this puppy off um, off camera I'll just get some solder wick and go around these points a little bit more and then we'll We'll take a look at that when it's on the bench. Well, as you can see here, there's quite a bit of damage to this guy. This body of this encoder just fell out after I added a little solder wick to the top side of the vias. You can see there's a crack right there, completely uh, dismantled. This thing must have taken a hit at some point. Not sure what. Got three more of these guys to take to unsolder from this side and then we'll see if we can source an encoder on the nets.